Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram. This is episode 39 on Pegasus, channel 13 in Ithaca, public access TV, recorded on February 20th, 2013. Okay, so today we are going to go to, well... We're going to go to Cayuga Lake. We're going to go take another look at Cayuga Lake. We, last time we looked at Cayuga Lake, whether it freezes or not. Now we're going to take a look at the headwaters. But first, let's just uh, take a look at this. Uh, Cayuga Lake Watershed Network. That's this hat I have on here. It is a, an organization of individuals and municipalities and, and uh, other organizations and what have you, businesses and so forth, that are looking after the, uh, the health uh, and the future of Cayuga Lake. So um, that's kind of cool, kind of interesting. So today's program is going to be about the headwaters of Cayuga Lake. And uh, so we're going to start off, let's see where we'll start off here. You will start off, we'll get the big picture from, let's see, give me back it here, let's uh, get rid of that. All right, there we go. Outer space from a satellite, probably a probably a Landsat satellite. So where are we? Well, you probably recognize this as the northeast coast of the U.S. on a remarkably clear day, because this is a composite photograph of uh, probably a single, single uh, time. And in the upper left, you can see a dark area. That is Lake Ontario. And just below that are the Finger Lakes. You really only can make out maybe Seneca Lake and Cayuga Lake, possibly Owasco and Skinny Atlas there. So we'll go in a little closer. There we go. Right in the middle is Seneca Lake, and then to the right of it is Cuga Lake. So those are the two longest Finger Lakes. There's 11 Finger Lakes in all, and I won't go through them all now, but uh, someday we'll, we'll, we'll take a tour through all the Finger Lakes. But as you can see, Seneca and Cayuga are very similar in size. Their, their surface area is like, uh, I think, uh, uh, Cayuga is 67 square miles, and Seneca is uh, 68. Although Cuga is a little bit longer, 38 miles long, and Seneca is 35 miles long. So let's get in a little closer. Again, a satellite picture, obviously. And um, so now this is looking at the larger watershed again. We're looking at the Great Lakes. The upper right is Lake Huron. So we're looking from east to northwest. And that's Lake Huron up there. That's Lake Huron that's lit up by the reflection from the sun. And uh, to the lower right of Lake Huron is the Georgian Bay, which is north of Toronto. Then the other brightly lit, lit lake um, in just right of center, lower center, is Lake Ontario. And then to the left, a little bit up from the center in the shadow of the clouds, is Lake Erie. So the water goes, well, it goes from Lake, lake Superior across uh, the north end of Lake Michigan into Lake Huron into Lake Erie into Lake Ontario and then the lower right the water goes out by that river the St. Lawrence River so that's the thousand islands you see in there in the lower right so where are we well you've probably found us by now if you're looking just below center you see these scratches in the landscape that uh, are uh, the Finger Lakes going this we're looking left to right we're looking from south to north so uh, you can see maybe one, two, three, maybe five or six Finger Lakes there. And you can see Seneca Lake and Cayuga Lake. So Cayuga Lake would be the lower one of the two larger lakes. So let's come down yet farther, much farther now, in an airplane over Ithaca looking north over Cayuga Lake. And you can see that it's not a straight shot north and south. And actually, the lake actually bends and winds. And it's a sort of more of a zigzag lake when viewed from this perspective. It's straight above, it's not quite as, uh, from straight above, it's not quite as zigzag as it appears from, from this angle. So, uh, uh, by the way, uh, many aerial photographs will be used in this show, and I want to thank most all of them, are, were taken by uh, my friend Bill Hecht, who uh, loves to do aerial photography of our area. So, Cayuga Lake is more than its lake itself it's all the land around it it's watershed all the land around it that feeds the lake with water and uh, so this is outlined here in this community science institute i think it's called um 
uh, map showing the watershed of Cougar Lake and the sub watersheds and that's what we're going to get into but all of that land around Cougar Lake the water that falls on it and drains off the land in the form of rain and snow into creeks and so forth uh, or into springs heads towards Cuga Lake and the other lakes have their own watersheds and this is all a sub watershed of uh, uh, the you know, larger system we'll talk about at the end of the show so so okay so how does this all start out well I said like rain and snow and what have you and uh, so we get a rainy day like this one here at Teganic Falls and the water comes down and it flows into the creeks flows off the land and uh, we get some very heavy rains like we did in this picture during Tropical Storm Lee a couple of years ago and uh, you can get quite a lot of heavy runoff but in general it's not muddy dirty stuff like that but the water this is the this is actually Fall Creek around Ithaca Falls showing the full reflection of the sky and the forest at the top of the cliff and probably a little bits of cliff in there too so this is it was a pretty neat reflective scene there so this water drains off the landscape a lot of it soaks into the land it becomes groundwater and maybe emerges elsewhere as springs uh, but the rest of it that goes downhill flows off the surface flows into little brooks that join larger brooks and so forth and eventually make their way to the valley in this view from Cornell campus above Library Slope looking south into the Cayuga Inlet Valley over the city so um, let's see well where do we go from here let's go back up in the air and we're looking now over Ithaca College at the city of Ithaca and boy you can see what we have done to the valley uh, south of Cayuga Lake we've built it up almost completely would you believe that uh, 200 years ago that was almost all wetland it was it was uh, swamps and marshes uh, swamps have wooded plants in them mostly tree marshes have like cattails and other non woody plants in them and maybe some open water it's virtually all of it now been uh, built up there's a couple of little remnants of it and the streams flow into the south end of Cuga Lake to there so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at a well, look at this so now we're looking, imagining looking from the sky again, south over Cayuga Lake. So we're looking, that's the south end of Cayuga Lake, and Ithaca would be right there uh, where the lake ends and going south. And this shows the major tributaries, the headwaters of Cayuga Lake, going all the way back towards Spencer, New York, almost to Spencer, New York. And these show the major gorges. We won't look at every single gorge, but we'll look at the principal ones and uh, um, go through that. All right, so um, the headwaters of Cayuga Lake create much of our scenery here. When the, the uh, one of the big one, the main trunk headwa head headwater, you could say, is that of Cayuga Inlet. Now this is a whole hodgepodge of streams that actually do coalesce into one main stream that we'll look at in a minute. But this is the sub watershed of Cayuga Inlet and uh, it comes uh, you could be said it's the largest sub watershed but we'll talk about that a little bit later but it collects the streams in the southwestern corner the southern and the southwestern side of the Cayuga Lake watershed down Inlet Valley this is a view from Bostwick Road up on the uh, west side of the valley across from Buttermilk Falls in the town of Ithaca, looking south into the inlet valleys, the land rises higher and higher. It gets up to nearly 2,000 feet above sea level, and there's a spectacular, almost mountainous valley coming north from West Danby. Uh, like uh, now, this is a view on into West Danby, where the Cayuga Inlet stream uh, is young. It, it a little to the left off the picture. The stream originates almost in Spencer, New York, but uh, it comes in the lower part of this picture. And you see a, a line going through there. That's probably actually the railroad, that um, the Norfolk Southern Railroad that brings coal up from West Virginia mountaintop removal mines to our power plant on Cayuga Lake. But just below that is the stream. So they sort of follow each other. And then the lakes there are uh, glacial lakes called kettle ponds, mostly. 
and uh, were caused during the Ice Age or the end of the Ice Age when blocks of ice were buried in earth called terminal or valley heads moraine that buried them and then they collapsed and left holes that are still filled with water today. It's certainly not glacial water anymore. This is the Lindsay, this is the same place called the Lindsay Parsons Biodiversity Preserve. There's one of those kettle ponds and um, the Biodiversity Preserve is a um, preserve of the Finger Lakes Land Trust and is uh, preserved for its, as it says, biodiversity for um, to study the, um, the ecology of our landscape here. So there's a lot to be learned there and there are paths and trails and so forth around. You can walk all over this and they, uh, an interpretive sign and brochures and what have you map that shows you where it goes. But in any case, this is near the head, headwaters of Cayuga Lake. That hill back there is called Thatcher's Pinnacles and there's a spur of the Finger Lakes Trail that comes out to there, it looks over the valley, back over this valley. All this is, this is taken from the air, but it looks out over over this area. So, um, yeah, amazing. So, Cayuga Inlet gets its start south of Ithaca, maybe 15 miles or more, and flows north towards Cayuga Lake. The elevation up in here is, oh, I don't know, maybe a thousand or eleven feet, hundred feet above sea level, I'm guessing there, but I think it's in that ballpark. And when it gets to the lake, it's about 400 feet above sea level, or just under that. So, it has a, it has a long um, descent through the um, through Inlet Valley, and then we're going to get to a, another sort of tributary um, watershed to Cayuga Inlet. So Cayuga Inlet is made up of its main stream, but it also has many tributary watersheds. So we'll take a look at the first one that comes up, the first major one. There are others, but uh, we'll take the first major one that you'll be familiar with, which is Enfield Creek, which is on the west side of the valley, a couple of miles south of Ithaca. And that is Enfield Glen looking from east, the east from South Hill actually on the east side of the valley. Uh, so Inlet Valley is in the, um, the bottom there. Th this picture was taken from the west. Now we're across the valley on the east side of the valley looking west into Enfield Glen which winds through the hills there and starts up at the top of the hill pretty much as a fairly gentle stream but enters a gorge and the um, climax of Enfield Glen of course is 115 feet high. Lucifer Falls, probably originally called Enfield Falls back 150 years ago or so, and um, wanders through a gorge for a couple of miles. And this is the other spot you're probably very familiar with, which is the uh, swimming area, the uh, lower falls at uh, Robert Treeman State Park. This is all in Robert Treeman State Park, Enfield Glen is, and uh, of course the swimming in the summer is um, one of the best swimming spots around here and this was created back in the 20s and 30s and uh, was grandfathered in to modern times so uh, we still have that. That in Buttermilk Falls and a couple of other places in the Finger Lake State Park region have gorge swimming but I don't think they would create that today with the uh, you know, stricter um, regulations and lawsuits and whatever you, you have you um, regarding swimming areas. So we're going to go back up on on West Hill here looking across again from Boswick Road over a farm there, dairy farm, and see a couple of grooves in the landscape there and that's actually in Buttermilk Falls State Park. There's two gorges there. Swing around a little bit here. Now we're up in the air looking another Bill Hecht photo. Looking straight on in the center there's two gorges. The one on the right that's deep and dark that's Buttermilk Falls the one on the left is called Owl Gorge. That doesn't have any trails in it, um, but uh, I live near that, so that's why my little little uh, video production company and publishing company is called Owl Gorge, Owl Gorge Productions. So uh, swing around again. This is taken actually from West Hill, looking southeast, again at uh, Buttermilk Glen in Owl Gorge. Uh, a Bill Hack, uh, low low swinging aerial of Buttermilk Falls. So Buttermilk Falls comes down the hill several hundred feet. Comes all the way from the village of Danby and the Michigan Hollow State Forest in uh, Jennings Pond in Danby. And uh, way back, way back in the back of this picture, you can't really see it, but uh, from way off in those hills. Drains all of that area in its own little sub, sub, -sub watershed, I guess you could say. And eventually culminates in 
Buttermilk Falls cascades down the hill in two or three major cascades, two major ones. This is the first falls, and the second falls is up, up the top there. They're actually separated by a few hundred feet, and um, that is quite a uh, scenic resource. And of course, farther up in Buttermilk Glen, there are some really beautiful pools and little falls, and then this is Pulpit Falls, which is just above the mud Buttermilk Falls itself, and it comes out of an amazing, tortuous, potholed section of gorge. And all of this water, along with the water from Enfield Glen and many other gorges on the sides of the Inlet Valley, end up in Cayuga Inlet. Now, if you look up at the upper right here, you see a notch in the hill, and that is Buttermilk Glen with Buttermilk Falls in it, and then the other notch to the left, that's Owl Gorge. So they are discharging their water into Cayuga Inlet, all collecting the water from all these different places that they have. Uh, let's see, let's go back to review that, find that picture. Hey, where are we? Hey. There we go. So these are all these streams have come together in the center there. You may be able to make out the trunk stream that actually goes down into Ithaca. So that's really what a watershed is. It's sort of a uh, tree-like or dendritic pattern of uh, drainage and I guess you could say it's sort of a fractal type situation where you can get sub watersheds of sub watersheds and sub watersheds goes on and on. But the next uh, stream that we encounter as we go down Cayuga Inlet is Six Mile Creek. Six Mile Creek comes into the southeast corner of Ithaca and uh, there's its sub watershed, watershed. You can see the upper left there it goes into the city and it joins actually the stream there is Cayuga Inlet. So it's part of the Cayuga Inlet flow. So let's get an aerial of that. I've shown this on the show before, another Bill Hecht picture. And it shows the city reservoirs upper right there. You can say make out the city reservoir. And then an older reservoir no longer used is in the center there. So that's uh, uh, sometimes they call the upper and lower reservoirs. And uh, the there's another dam farther down, so the, the one in the middle is first, second dam, and then there's third dam, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you're not supposed to hike around the upper reservoir, but uh, people do. So here is Six Mile Creek coming down through its gorge and through the Mulhil Mulholland Wildflower Preserve, which is a section of the Six Mile Creek uh, natural area uh, owned by the city of Ithaca, partly in the city and partly in the town of Ithaca. This is the lower reservoir here and a very beautiful spot and I like to hike over there and it all comes down to Ithaca so here we are looking aerial down to right in the center actually is the Ithaca farmers market right on the waterfront to the left of that is the uh, water treatment plant sewage treatment plant of the city and um, the stream coming in to the uh, well it's actually I want to Look at the upper left. First of all, the, the main stream in there, of course, is Cayuga Inlet. And then the upper left is this little green streak coming across. Very extreme upper left. That is Six Mile Creek coming into Cayuga Inlet. And then you see two streams coming together in the upper left and forms a little peninsula there. That's actually Inlet Island. And the Boatyard Grill is at the end of that. And then there's a little park right at the end of there that you can go to. And the stream that is on the left is now where the flow, or at least some of the flow of Six Mile Creek comes, but it used to be uh, the route of Cayuga Inlet itself. And then the stream on the right in the upper area there is now the rerouted Cayuga Inlet, rerouted back in the 1960s by the Army Corps of Engineers into what they call the Flood Control Channel. So there's long stories behind that. But now we're going to look at uh, the next stream right in the middle and, and coming into the lower center and coming underneath the highway there which is route 13 that is the mouth of cascadilla creek where it joins cayuga inlet and cayuga inlet of course where it joins there you see that long sort of light blue type top uh structure that is the pavilion of the of the ethica farmers market right there so uh, so next we're going to go to cascadilla creek so we'll go back into the air look to the uh, East Hill from up in the air and right in the center is the Cornell campus and on the right hand side is the gorge, Cascadilla Glen, class Cascadilla Gorge and you can see way back that the stream comes from the hills and back Mount Pleasant primarily. This is uh, drains the sub-sub watershed of Mount Pleasant 
and uh, let's see, actually, I can has his own sub watershed here. So we'll zoom in and we'll, we'll uh, focus in a little bit more here. This is Cascadilla Glen coming down through the Cornell campus. On the left is the Cornell campus. On the right is College Town. And then here is the map of the sub watershed of Cascadilla Creek. Not a very big one compared to Six Mile Creek and Cayuga Inlet and some of the other ones. And, uh, but it makes a pretty little gorge. This is looking off the, the um, College Avenue Bridge, looking downstream towards Ithaca. And uh, uh, the waterfall here is just that, that bridge up there. That is the College Avenue Bridge and that waterfall. I think that one is called the Giant Staircase, if I'm not mistaken. And then this is the waterfall at the end, downtown, near a little section of park called Treman Triangle, because Robert H. Treman donated that to the city. And lots of story behind that. We'll get into stories about Robert H. Treman again someday. It's back up in the air, we're looking here again at Cascadilla Creek. Can you pick it out? Right in the middle of the picture is this corridor of trees that runs right through uh, well on top again the Cornell campus and then right below that corridor of trees is College Town and then the north-south road there street is uh, College Avenue and the Glen goes down the hill to the left and works its way across town again to and now the lower or the, or the left of center on the left hand side that is again Cascadella Creek as it has come across town and flowing into Cuga Inlet to the right heading towards the lake. And notice that there is another stream coming in in the lower right. We'll get to that in a moment. So where are we here? Now we turn around and we're looking from the west back at that same scene. Cascadilla Creek comes in at the um, right, just right of center into Cuga Inlet. Again, just right of center with that long uh, light blue topped structure is the Ithaca Farmers Market heading out to Cuga Lake. That's Cass Park with the baseball fields and the Allen H. Treeman State Marine Park in the extreme left. That's their marina basin. So we'll go down to the lake and um, head on out looking back at Ithaca College, looking back in Cuga Inlet, finally out to the lake and the lighthouses out there that help you get back into the channel of Cuga Inlet. Back up in the air looking at the mouth of a stream. Now in the lower part there, that's the marina basin of Allen Treeman Park and then the mouth of Cayuga Inlet and you see the lighthouse on the lower left. Well then above that jetty there, coming through Stewart Park and the Fuertes Bird Sanctuary is Fall Creek. So uh, Fall Creek uh, and its gorge, again this time on the north or left hand side of the Cornell campus and the Fall Creek, I'll zoom in on there, you can actually see Ithaca Falls just, just uh, a little to the lower left of center there pouring off and then in the middle there is the bridge over Stewart Avenue and you might be able to make out above that the, the uh, student suspension bridge and this is the sub watershed this dark green area in the center of Fall Creek which is said to be the largest sub watershed of Cayuga Lake some 140 square miles so there's a lot of territory here as it winds from the uplands all the way up into Cayuga County and Cortland County and so forth and uh, meanders across the farms and forests and, and then makes its way finally to the Ithaca, the Cornell campus here. It's winding around to the lower right and then up into Beebe Lake right in the center. Looking down right here you can see the corner of Beebe Lake on the right and then that's the Cornell plantations just to the left of it. Going by the art squad and there's the gorge on the lower, lower right and the uh, suspension bridge. Boom, boom. Looking now from the Stewart Avenue bridge upstream, there's the falls there. You can see the, the suspension bridge back there. Now turning around the other side of the Stewart Avenue bridge, looking at the lip of Ithaca Falls. And we'll get up in the air again, look straight down on Ithaca Falls, just to the left of center there. The very, very extreme left, you might be able to see the Stewart Avenue bridge, but uh, this is not a lot of water in the falls in this picture but it flows across, it flows down that cliff and then across town. Here's a view from Stewart Avenue just uh, north of the bridge when there's a lot more water in it in January. Roaring over that cliff. Quite a sight when there's a lot of water and it very beautiful last October. And eventually hits the flats of Ithaca that once were wetland and slowly meanders over to Cayuga Lake. So uh, there it is right in the center there is Fall Creek 
coming out, and then to the right of that is the marina basin you can see and Cayuga Inlet. Those two streams, when you add them together, provide half the water, one quarter each, half the water that enters Cayuga Lake through its tributaries with uh, an asterisk on that, which we'll explain if I have a chance before the end of the show. We're running down on time here a little bit. Uh, but um, anyway, so here we are. We're going to now the, follow the water north, and we'll look at a couple of other sub-watersheds and take a boat, say. Say we take the, the uh, MV handles uh, of uh, um, Ithaca Boat Tours. It used to be called Tia Harrow Tours. Just renamed themselves Ithaca Boat Tours. I work on that boat in the summer. Back in the air with Bill Hecht looking down towards Ithaca, but just right of center is a point of land. That is Myers Point, and uh, there's a stream that comes in there from the lower left. You might be able to follow some of it. That's Salmon Creek, another major tributary of Cayuga Lake, and this is the Salmon Creek watershed flowing south. This is an unusual situation to have a stream flowing south into Cayuga Lake. And there's a whole geologic explanation behind that, which someday maybe we'll, we'll get into. But uh, so there's Salmon Creek watershed, aerial view from the west, looking at Salmon Creek coming in from the upper left to having formed Myers Point, forming a peninsula from all of the, well, you can see a lot of silt coming into the lake there. Myers Point, over thousands of years, the silt being washed down from the hills has created this point of land and looking down on it, look how much, how shallow the water is around Myers Point here. The uh, Salmon Creek comes in from the right and then goes up a bit upper center and over time it has dumped a tremendous amount of silt in the lake especially in historic times the mouth of Salmon Creek right here at Myers Point in Lansing Town Park and then we're gonna go see the this is we're running down on time here so we don't have a lot of time to talk about it but this is the um, um, most spectacular gorge and waterfall on the lake itself and I'm sure you uh, uh, have an inkling of what I'm talking about. Where is this? We're up on the west side now, looking northeast. That is Taganic Gorge, yes, and Taganic Point, and the Taganic Creek watershed coming from over in Schuyler County, and uh, flows down the hill towards the lake, having uh, eroded its enormous gorge in the west shore of Cayuga Lake. So it's Taganic Falls State Park, aerial shot, all this Bill Heck, uh, looking up the gorge now, from over the lake, looking at the uh, north wall of the gorge, and where that ends is the waterfall, obviously a winter picture. And getting from the overlook, this is the falls overlook. Winter picture this January. So that's pretty much it for our gorges. And I'm just gonna quickly go through the rest of it here. Going north on Cayuga Lake, uh, looking at the points going north, Far north, the rest of the lake. Most uh, three quarters, the Salmon Creek and Tacana Creek each contribute an eighth of the water to the lake. So three quarters of the water that comes into Cayuga Lake comes into its tributaries from the south. So um, there it is. That's the uh, that's all we have time for today to talk about that. This is the other end, Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge, and then we are in the the Seneca River, Seneca Oswego watershed that goes up into Lake Ontario with the other Finger Lakes. And we're back here again. So uh, that's pretty much it for today. Thank you for joining me. Next week we'll be back. We'll do some more on Cuga Lake probably. So uh, have a good week.